Neonic Void Productions presents. And today I'm joined with. I am the housekeeper. I am Bunny up wondering why you guys are like breathe crying weird. <laughs> and I'm Mad Chairman. And I have no idea what's going on right now. <laughs> I, I really wish y'all kept up the bit of the. Okay, <laughs> retake. You're doing it again. No. <laughs> Too late. Take no. two. <laughs> So hi, welcome back to Spook. Hi, What's good? What's like? poppin'? Um, I'm scared. I need an adult. You are an adult. <laughs> we are You're an adult. Surrounded by we're, adults. We're all we adults. adults. Don't grow up, kids. It's a trap. I need an adult here. An adult. No, I'm <laughs> telling you right now, there's no such thing. <laughs> anyway, housekeeper, take it the way. <laughs> If you like this podcast, make sure you follow and rate us on whatever site you listen to your podcast. Share with your friends. New episodes get uploaded every Saturday. Links are down in the description for other podcasts that are part of the Neonic family. Follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Spookocalypse. That's at S-P-O-O-K-O-C-A-L-Y-P-S-E. We have a YouTube. I think this is going to be the last time I'm going to be saying this. (laughs) Because I've said it for the past, like, what, five episodes now? Yeah. Um, it's also going to be down in the description, probably on the link tree page. Uh, f- uh, subscribe, you know, uh, like, ring that bell, whatever the heck they say for YouTube, you know. Uh, we do spooky shit. Um, mints are on the pillow. Yes. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about a movie. The movie that we're talking today is called The Invitation. Not to be confused with the previous episode of The Invitation that we did on a different movie with the same name. I think, honestly, this movie should have kept its original title called The Bride, but that's just me. Well, we can put The Invitation 2022, because that's whenever this yeah. movie I feel like that would have given it away, though. The Bride. Yeah, that would have that literally spoiled the whole movie. Did you know originally this film was being produced by Sam Raimi? I did not. <gasps> what? It was, but he had to back out because of scheduling conflicts. Uh-huh. Probably due to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, my guess. Because it looked like the movie was around um, was around that time it was being worked on. So that's my guess. Oh, man. Imagine if he continued. Right, it'd probably be a lot gorier. That was the case because those because go- those under his um ghost, not under his, but him and his partner's ghost house pictures originally, mm. but it ended up changing hands and everything. So, uh, this film was released August twenty sixth, twenty twenty two, released by Sony Pictures Releasing. Uh, the production companies were Screen Gems, uh, Mid Atlantic Films. Um, Emily Gladstone Productions and it TSG like Emil. 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 Okay, Emil. Emil Gladstone Productions and TSG Entertainment Two. The second question mark. Um, it was directed by Jessica M. Thompson, and it was written by Blair Butler. Which Blair Butler. I recognize that name. I don't know if anyone else does, but she's back from the G4 tech, uh, G4 days. Oh she my was a God. Co-host. I fucking love G4. She was a co-host on, um, or no, she did one of the segments on attack of the show. She was also part of X play. Yep. She was also part of X play. Dude. I so, love G4. Same. And I'm like, I saw her write that wrote this man. I'm like, what? Girl, queen work. 
bring back the original freaking Ninja Warrior, please, from Japan. Because uh, that's where I used to watch it, was on G4. Yeah. Bring back the Japanese version. So the budget for this movie was $10 million, And box office, it made $33.7 million. Word. So it made... It made three times the budget. I mean, it's nothing. It's not numbers to write home about, but it made its it made its budget and then some. Uh, this movie was production back all the way back in 2019, um, and has been kind of circulating since. And of course, it drew inspiration from uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, of course, as we're soon as we're going to soon find out. Spoiler alert. <laughs> This whole every episode is a spoiler alert. <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, this movie was shot in Hungary back in 20, uh, September 20, 2021. Um, it stars um, Natalie. It started in Budapest, though. Natalie Emanuel? Emanuel. Yeah. She's the star of the show. Queen. Eve. And then we got Thomas. Do- Dotley? Do- oh, try, try Dirtley? It's, it's a Scottish, Dirtley? It's a Scottish name. Dartley. I don't, I don't no. know. Uh, I don't see. My ancestors are looking down on me. <laughs> Same. They're shaming you so hard. Dotley? 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 If you, if you your want- family. If you want to, if you want to do it like in the like very like Americanized, it's Doherty, or Doherty. Okay. Doherty. Well, what's well, what's Doherty. the original? What's the original pronunciation of it? The original pronunciation of it. Like what's how's it supposed to be pronounced? Uh, I'm not Scottish. I'm Irish, my guy. But we can look it up. <laughs> well, I'm. But well, I mean, if you want to go into a family history, <laughs> I, here's the reason why I, why why I hate myself because my family both come from Ireland and Scotland, but they don't like to acknowledge that. Knowledge each other. <laughs> okay, hold on. Give me a second. Do- Doherty. 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 So the H is silent. Doherty. Yes. Okay. Or okay. they say it really fast that we just can't hear it. Doherty. <laughs> Jeez. We're sorry. We are We're so sorry, sorry to our Thomas. Scottish. We're, st- we're sorry to our Scottish listeners. I'm sorry, ancestors. Don't curse me, please. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'm sorry. We love you. We love you. <laughs> we love you as uh, David. Oh, God. His character's name, Deville? Deville. Deville. <laughs> God, terrible. Terrible. I'm not going to try to pronounce Stephanie's last name. Oh gosh, how the hell do you pronounce that? I don't. Qu- queen, she's a queen, a queen she's from, Denmark. from Denmark. Stephanie Cornell. I'm not going to try. She played Victoria. Stephanie, um, uh, Alana Bowden, who played Lucy. Uh, and I think those were. You got the Hugh Skinner as Oliver. Anyway, ow, fuck, I hit my hand. Shit, broke my finger. Not really, but dramatic. Oh, that's a Norwegian name. <sighs> Cornelius. So it's, 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 it translates to Cornelius. Her last Cornelius. name translates to Cornelius. Got it, got it. So um, to give you kind of a context on what how people like this movie, Rotten Tomatoes score, as of right now, is... Uh, let me make sure it's not if it's still bad or not. Is it? It is twenty nine percent on the Rotten <gasps> Tomatoes score. Are you kidding me? I know, right? I and actually critics, love. I actually, the audience. The critic. The critic score is twenty nine percent. The audience score is fifty nine. That um, kind of makes sense. Uh, for Google, it's a th- it's a uh, solid three. Wow. <laughs> and IMDb gives it a solid five point three out of ten. Wow, God, are we the only one? To, uh, housekeeper, are we the only ones that love this movie? <laughs> Probably, I fucking loved this movie. I was having so much fun watching this in theaters. <laughs> Both of we us, had, we had so much fun with it. Not as freaking bi- being like uh, bisexual messes. 
<laughs> where it's like, come get y'all's juice. Come get y'all's juice. <laughs> all of them. All, all of, of them. them. All three. Come get your juice. God. I love all it. the juice. <laughs> He's like, this like bleed, like bleed me dry. I don't care. Bleh. I hate bleh, it. Bleh, I hate bleh, myself. Bleh. Come I get your blood. What's going on here? <laughs> we're thirsty. We're thirsty. We were thirsting over the vampires. Okay. We were. By the time we were walked out, I was just like, I don't know why she didn't just take the offer, man. That's like, you're getting two hot wives and a hot husband. Let's go. And you're a vampire for the. T- we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, yeah, let's. <laughs> Our house housekeeper, start us off. How did the story begin? So, uh, <laughs> this story begins with um, Evie, and she is um, a hostess, basically, or a server for like this very like high end. I would say like it's it's a very like private event, right? Yeah. Um, and she's walking around and she's offering stuff to people. I forgot what it's called. Like beef, beef, something, beef carbaggio. Yeah. Right? That's what that was. Beef I was carbaggio? like, it just looked like, like the typical order of you serve at just a meeting or like a gathering like this. I was like, would you like this thing to eat? And everyone's just like, no. That's basically, it's, it's the, the whole, you know, that trope. But yeah, she's like, beef carbaggio. <laughs> And like you know, people say no. People are rude to her. Um, and the event is for this DNA testing um, company, kind kind of like Ancestry, but you know, not Ancestry because but of copyright. <laughs> but copyright. Well, no, because Ancestry does the same thing, where like it yeah. it, it does connect you to other parts of your family and everything. Like Twenty one. Uh, what is it? Twenty uh, uh, three and me. And me. 23 of me does that too. Uh, not sponsored, by the way. We're not sponsored I wish by it either was. one of them. I know. Please. I wish. Please. <laughs> I would love um, to know all my heritage. I know. Me too. Be like, why Why am I plateauing after I lose four pounds? Like, is it a DNA thing or is it just because, <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, so uh, at the end of the of the event, like you know, her and her uh, like best friend are are counting their tips. They're you know shooting, um, shooting the shit basically, talking shit the way that servers talk shit, <laughs> talking about um, how many um, sexual harassment uh, charges that they may or may not be able to do, you know, um, and uh, her friend was able to snatch some goodie bags. Um, which have wine in it and a DNA test so she could take her DNA and send it in. Dun, dun, dun. But she does go back. She goes back to her house and uh, she takes the DNA test um, and discovers that she has a distant cousin in, well, like what? Like second cousin? First cousin? Yeah. I think it's his second, her second cousin. Sorry, second cousin. Yeah, second cousin from England named Oliver, which Oliver does invite her to go like for them to like meet up since he's all like he's in New York, um, coincidentally, <laughs> um, and her friend trying to like tells her no, like don't do it, um, and she's like <laughs> I'm not gonna listen to you and goes off and meets this man to where oliver uh, oliver and her get to know each other oliver tells her about like the scandal about her great uh grandmother um uh, emmeline and like and she had like a secret child with like a footman who happened to be um a black so yes uh evie is a, a beautiful woman of color and um they they get to know each other a little bit more. He finds out that she's lost both of her parents and he invites her and she goes like, oh, well, like you just told me that your mom wanted to take you to England. Well, what a surprise. There's going to be a wedding in a few weeks in England. So why not take the trip? And she's just like, no way. And he's just all like, yeah, let's go. I'm trying to make this really funny, but I'm 
missing the beat. So, you can, um, <laughs> you can speak with the English accent whenever you're talking as anyone who isn't Evie. Oh, I can. I can do that. So he goes, Evie. Oh, why don't you come over to England and meet the family? And oh, she's God. like, oh, I can't do that. And he goes, oh, please, let's go. It's going to be fun. You get to meet everybody. And everybody's so excited whenever they found out that you exist. The scandal is not even a thing anymore. It's fantastic. And she's just like, oh, but I can't afford it. And he goes, oh, well, I have miles. Don't worry about it. It's an all expense paid vacation. And so <laughs> they go. <laughs> holy not sus that's weird he goes he goes i have all these miles so you know it'll be doing me a favor and see her friend is a smart one that's a little sus <laughs> she's just all like don't trust the white man and i'm all like smart <laughs> <laughs> don't trust Period. the white man don't trust him <laughs> and, and so she's like you know what i'm gonna go and so she arrives mm -mm. She she does she goes to Whitby um at the new Carfax Abbey where um uh there's rules that her best friend put in place which is take a picture of the license plate whenever you get there text her before she goes to bed every um like every night and don't trust men with goatees which i'm all like that's smart too like period period she has good rules i want her to be my best friend too um so she does she goes and like as she tries to take the pictures she, um oh as she's arriving there's a van full of like maids and they like step out of the van mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and as she like backs up to take the picture she runs into one of the maids that was carrying glass and she tries to help him. And then Mr. McDouchebag shows up. Um, he is the butler, the head butler. And he's extremely rude. And that's when Lord Walter DeVille of the Manor comes to save the day and introduces him to himself and everything. And uh, it's a very, very bad <laughs> first impression. And she gets settled in, and she gets um, escorted to her room. Did you notice that the maids all had numbers on their yes. dresses? Yes, yes, embroidered. I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, because like literally within like like <clears throat> whenever we were watching it, and it was like one, two, three, four, five, and I was like, why are they numbers? <laughs> I was like, mm, they're they're hinting at something. <gasps> Is this foreshadowing? <laughs> and why did they show up in a van? And of all things because they're treated like cattle i mean that's kind of obvious but yeah their food that's <laughs> literally what they are their food spoiler alert these guys are food um, dinner is sir come get, get yo yo juice, juice. <laughs> um, that's gonna be the name of the episode come get y'all's juice <laughs> i love it uh so she she's trying to get she starts to get settled into her room she has a lady's maid her name is mrs swift um and mrs swift tells her the story about the late uh the late lady of the house i don't think she ever mentions her name i don't remember her, I mean, her i think it was emmeline yeah it's it's the same as the scandal of the great grandmother uh, miss emmeline which when oh. you watch the movie in the very beginning, you see this woman in the painting that the main uh, Eve looks at oh, yeah. um, in the very beginning of the movie, you see her walking through the castle as she um, unalives herself with some. Oh, she yeah. wraps with, a with chain piano wire. Neck. It's piano with wire. Piano wire. Yeah. And it's then like she drops wire. a statue as she, she jumps off the balcony and she, stuff. She and, grabs the yeah. statue. Yeah. To mm -hmm. add weight. That, that yeah. I was wondering why I'm like, why did she grab that to add weight? Yeah. Like to make sure that she would lose her head. Yes, and yeah. and Whoa. when Evie is walking through the castle to her room, you do notice that the statue is still missing. <laughs> um, and the odd other uh, uh, art pieces that are around, you know. Um, so she's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, and she notices bars on the window. To which Mrs. Swift um, explains that the there's these like carnivorous birds. They get really crazy during this time of the year. I forgot what they're called. 
think she calls them shrikes. Shrikes, there we yeah. go. And so, and she I was like, "Is that a real bird? Is it? Are you thinking of the snipe? Because that is a real bird too. It is a real bird. Yeah, like you shrikes these... are a real bird. Yeah, a carnivorous bird. Um." Carnivorous towards people or just carnivorous in general? So they are birds of the family Lanidae. The family is composed of 34 species. Um, the family name is actually derived from the Latin word for butcher, which is Lanius. And some shrikes are known as butcher birds because of their feeding habits. So I'm assuming, yes. They're fucking crazy. Hmm. It says eating habits, food, period. <laughs> Northern <laughs> Shrike. Yeah, it's yeah. like mainly insects, but also lizards, mice, frogs, small, like small birds. Like, oh. They eat oh, small birds. And occasionally they just about lizards. <laughs> but, but they're kind of cute. Yeah, they're, uh, but Mrs. Swift also explains like, yeah, we had a guest once who like a shrike took out his eye and impaled it on one of the stakes on the... Uh, on the on the what is it the the iron fence and she's like oh okay so that happens um what else happens after the room she calls her friend right she calls her best friend yeah she calls her up and i think she talks about the place mm -hmm. and, and the camera's the on so it's like well you have a four poster bed it's like yep and the hot lord. That that's what they say. They say hot lord. Mm -hmm. That's not. That's not my words. <laughs> the hot lord. <laughs> it's like I mean he is a, a dialogue. That's a movie, nice way of saying. <laughs> no, that's a nice way that they're saying it. I would say something else. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm sorry. You're really good looking. You're a very handsome man. To um, as she's on the phone with her best friend, um, Grace. That's her name. Her, her best friend's name is Grace. As she's on the phone with Grace, um, Walter does show back. Uh, he does like knock on the door and apologize. Um, and they, you know, have a cute little banter back and forth, like flirtatious banter about first impressions and how. Oh well, let's see if you could do a better second impression. And he goes, oh, yeah, I'd like that. And, you know, they leave. <laughs> Basically, it was just a really witty back and forth flirtatiousness. And then. <sighs> I'm trying to remember what happens next. I watched it yesterday again. So, like, I should remember it, but I don't remember. The... Is it the family reunion? The family reunion happens next? I think Evie yeah. goes out for a jog. Oh, that's right. She does. She does go out for a jog. Yeah. And finds that old ice house. And she noises. hears like screaming happen. Looks at the window. There's a ghost lady. Like, who the heck is that? And she's all like, it ends with me. Or some shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that that was like kind of perfect. Cause it encapsulates kind of how little corny this movie is. <laughs> Whatever. I love this movie though. Yeah. <laughs> I I I wasn't getting into it until the turn happens. Once we get there. Oh yeah. And that, the last like thirty minutes of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, like an Which, hour in, it's like, oh, oh, okay. It's like a big jump from a slow build to like, you know what? This is taking too long. Let's just get to the, right to the end. And like, oh, yep. Fuck. I don't know. I enjoyed it because it seemed like it was going to be like, I like you're just waiting for the, the like like the other shoe to drop, right? Like all of these like 
weird coincidences that happen at the first few minutes of the movie i'm like oh that's weird she just yeah. happens to be working at like a dna place oh she gets a dna test oh her second cousin just happens to be in new york you oh, know they just happen to be fabulously rich uh, oh wealthy. there's gonna be a wedding in a few weeks too hmm. some a lot of things are lining up way too <laughs> easily here Evie, you're not at all suspicious about what's happening that's suspicious that's, that's weird, weird. <laughs> and she goes to bed that night and i think like she she like you know whenever you have that dump chair and like it kind of looks like a person sitting mm-hmm. there in uh-huh. the dark yeah. if it, it, she psychs herself out she turns on the light she's like huh! And sees that it's just her jogging stuff. Like a scene out of Monsters, Inc. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) (laughs) It was not. It was not just her her stuff. It was was the goddamn man. Was it him? No. No, it was. It was the wife. I don't think it was. It was one of the wives. I think it was. I'm sorry. I don't think it was Walter. I think it was Victoria. Victoria Yeah, she admits to it later. Well, because there was a time later where she was sleeping and there was something in her room like actually like mm -hmm. tormenting her and that's when Walt shows up and then like that victoria does like admit to but like i'm thinking it's victoria at the beginning as well oh boy it was victoria yeah so very next day right yeah (laughs) so very next day she gets woken up late she's just all like hey your family reunion starting and she's like, oh no. And so she goes downstairs and it's literally just a room full of old white men. Dudes. Yeah. And her cousin, Oliver. <laughs> and then some great uncle who looks like a Mad Eye Moody. It's the patriarch. <laughs> it's the patriarch, yeah. the great uncle. You can't talk about the great patriarch uncle like that. Anyway. Uh, sure, I can't I he a bitch. I don't even remember. Like they, they were like, like oh my. Anyway, the great patriarch decides um, to give a big a sappy speech about how happy he is that they have found Avi and how she is such a blessing. To, and uh, as you can tell, like it's so amazing because you're the only girl because we're all guys and like and like I'm like well, that's kind of weird. That's so weird. How does that happen? Well, seeing as how her great grandmother was literally like the last lady that was around, I guess. Yeah, yeah and every other, Alexander. Yeah, and then like every other woman was married into the family, which which continued the bloodline, and the rest of the bloodline was just male. Until you know, Evie came around, which was from her mom's side, which was her great grandma. Hmm. Um, but it's strange how like none of the wives are there, and like now I have this theory that did they eat the wives? Ooh, hmm. like why aren't they there? Hmm. Do they not know if they are still alive or around? You know, like they're just like we're gonna have a guys trip, and it's just us for the family. It's like, okay, bye. We're gonna go to the Deville's a bigger mansion. Uh, you're gonna stay here, and then just like go. Like, what's what's going on? <laughs> Are they orchestrating an accident to get rid of their mortal wives? I mean, what they could do is just feed them. Oh dear, food. she's fallen from the top floor of the manor and has impaled herself upon a spike. What are the odds? And it was like, uh huh. So it's like, oh dear, the Lord Deville wants to uh, meet you in his study. He has a few important words for you. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, But yeah, and like Evie's like so touched by all of the nice, fabulous words. And she's, and I think they have a dinner that night as well right i don't know if that's Mm. the dinner it's not that dinner it's not the rehearsal dinner but there's like something else that happens that day that's Uh, 
kind of when they have like that uh, little like party where everyone's getting introduced, I think. Oh, right. Okay. So like she wakes up, I guess she comes back into her room and she finds that like that Walt has left um, a, a, a present for her as a form of apology. And it's a, in the form of a gorgeous yellow dress. I think it's yellow. Yeah. And it's like like silk. And it's like, oh, that's a gorgeous dress. And oh, Mm. on a gorgeous woman. It was beautiful. Well done, costume department. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And whenever she shows up, they're like, announcing. (laughs) Wait, I lost my notes. Where are they? It's like, Evelyn Alexander. And she's like, oh, okay. (laughs) And like shows up and everybody's all clapping, you know. And she meets up with Oliver to where like he's just like, oh, well, like you look gorgeous. And and she she talks with him and says, like, I can't shake the feeling that everybody's eyes are on me. And and like he's like, oh, well, can you blame them? And she's like, no, (laughs) you know. I love the confidence, Queen. I love the confidence. Um, like, can we also talk about how like charming um Oliver is for a minute? Like he like he just had like this like other side of the charming coin that that yeah. Walt didn't have. Like Walt had one side of the charming coin, and Oliver had a different side of the charming coin. Like he just looked like like oh like he could be like a really nice brother, you know, but he's not. <laughs> he's not he's not that fun um and that's whenever uh, um lucy and victoria come and introduce themselves and lucy is super happy she's like oh my god i'm so glad we finally get to meet you they're the maids of honor of this wedding that is supposed to be between these two ladies that are this this one lady and this guy. Um, that they mention once, and, they keep <laughs> and that it was vague. Yeah, they keep it vague. They're like, "Oh, this is the bride <laughs> and the groom, and they're they're so cute together, and you should come." You know, um, that was part of the 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 whenever she first meets Oliver, and like Lucy, like I said, she's very bubbly very sweet and she uh i noticed that her costume um looked very 20s like like very like flapper inspired from what i'm assuming and then at the time because it does get confirmed later in the movie because she's like well i've been here for 100 years and i'm all like okay 100 years from 2022 is 1922 so I was right. <laughs> I was like, wow, who would have thought? And then there's Victoria, who's been there for like centuries. Um, and Victoria is very like stuck up and and condescending and just acts like she just totally despises Evie. And like kind of talks down to her. And like and like Evie like good on you girl you put your your boundaries up spoke like and and stood up for yourself which i'm like oh it took me a lot for me to learn how to do that so for you to do that right then and there and walk away with your head still up girl queen <laughs> uh she walks like away she phrases it too it's like it was nice being here lucy doesn't even acknowledge victoria <laughs> yes i'm like oh i love a petty yes give me more pettiness feed me the petty Petty queen. Petty queen. Uh, So she goes and gets some more champagne. Lucy goes and talks to her. She goes, oh my God, New York. I've always wanted to go, um, but I don't travel as much. And she's just like, well, I'll take you. I can take you to all the secret places and all this kind of stuff. And like Lucy is like, is so grateful to how kind Evie is. And she goes like, thank you in advance and all this other stuff. Um, I think this when Walter shows up and he's announced. 
Yes, Walt does show up and he's announced. And he goes straight to Evie and she's like, oh my God, what are you doing? He goes like, well, it's customary I take do the first dance. And she goes, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to dance. And he's like, oh, it's okay. Let's go. And she's like, like no. <laughs> and he. Are you crazy? Yeah. It's like, are you fucking crazy? And he's like, ha, maybe. And dances with her. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot to mention the the same night that she saw like the, the 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 thing on the on the chair the first night. She went out of her room to like go get some more water, and that's whenever like she walked past the foyer to where the butler. Jesus, my dog scared the hell out of me. The butler, and um, was standing in front of all of the 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 mates. Yeah. And he goes like, "You're going to await your duties," and then like they they wait, and you hear a bell, and I think it's like like it rings twice. And he goes, "Number two, you're going to clean the library, which is supposed to be off limits because of renovations." Mm -hmm. And it shows him opening up like a little secret hatch to the key that has holds a key to where the library is, and she goes in, and she cleans a lot, and like as she's cleaning the library, like the lights don't work, so she lights these candles, has her headphones on. It's just like, oh no, girl, look behind you. Oh no, she can't hear us. She has AirPods in. I know. <laughs> Not sponsored by lights. Apple, by the way. It's just like lights, the candles, they get blown out. And she's like, what? And lights them again. And then they get blown out again. Just sort of like the person there was like, no. And then there's a no big spooky fame. monster who gets her. Oh no. What I could know. it be? <laughs> uh, flash forward to back to wherever they're dancing. And, uh, you know, he's like, hey, like, do you want to get out of here? You know, and she's like, yeah. And so, like, he goes, come on, I have something to show you. And so he goes to, like, this, like, little private, like, greenhouse looking place. Yeah, I think they call it the old ice house. Like, before mm -hmm. refrigerators, it's just where they store ice. No, they walk past that old ice house. Like, he, oh. like, she goes, what's that building over there? And he goes, it's an ice house. It, like, it's not in commission anymore. It was before, like, refrigerators were ever invented. Like, it's just there now. And he goes, come on, I have something cool to show you. And, like, he goes to, like, this, like, separate building that has, like, all of, like, anything you could think of when it comes to practicing the arts that's basically what's there like there's there's instruments there's a pottery uh a ceramic wheel i should say um like an easel with with like paints and stuff like anything that you could do whenever it comes to like any type of fine art that's what's there and they talk about their life a little bit you know like he's just like oh like it's i it's boring like my life is boring and sh and she goes it's hard to believe that whenever you have all this at your fingertips and he goes yeah well like there's no one real like it's 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 great but like if there's no one to like share it with it's just there you know and they're flirty and they're sitting and they're talking and they're getting closer to each other i think she shares her story about her parents as well, I believe. And how she got into ceramics, because he asked her about how she got into ceramics, and she tells him how it was a hobby that her mom took up, and, and you know, she just, she picked it up, and she's freelancing, and that's what she wants to do, is just become an, uh, an artist with, with her ceramics. And they do their little flirty Lucky banner day. again. <laughs> And the, like he goes, like he says something. I don't remember what it, what she says, what he says. But she goes, "When are you going to stop saying that?" And he goes, "Well, when are you going to kiss me?" And then right as they're about to lean in, like fireworks start. <laughs> and she goes, "Okay, now that's kind of like it's corny now, like it's too much." And he goes, "Do you want me to turn them off?" And she goes, "No." And then they kiss. <laughs> um. And the camera pans out to see Miss Victoria looking into the window like a fucking creep. And oops, sorry. Oops, keep on hitting my mic. Um, 
cuts to the next scene and Victoria is talking. It's still the party or they're, they're cleaning up at the end of the party and Victoria is talking with Walt and she is acting super jealous. And she's like, mm -hmm, like her accent. Well, I'm sorry. Her accent just passes right through the air. She's <laughs> like, mm, she's American. Like, it's like, she's very acting very haughty and walt tells her to play nice and she goes always and he goes i fucking mean it <laughs> he doesn't say i fucking but it's implied he's like bitch fucking play nice basically um and he walks away and then it cuts back to evie sleeping in her room and she gets woken up and she's hearing whispers and she looks up because it's a canopy. She has a, it's a four poster bed, but there's a canopy over her. Mm -hmm. And she's seeing the canopy move. And then she sees like a, a clawed hand push down, like, like, like messing around on, on the, on the canopy and then pushes down on the canopy and it freaks her out. And she knocks over her lamp. And crawls underneath the bed. And she hides underneath the bed. Um, and she hides there for about like well, a minute. And she's yanked out of the bed. Uh, out of like underneath the bed. And it's Walt. And she tells him like there's something there. There's like a little ooky spooky. Oh, there's something here to get me. And he's like around. He's like there's nothing here. Like it's only me. Like I'm, I'm just me. And you're safe. You're fine. And she's she's so shaken up. He offers to, you know, he's like, well, do you want me to stay with you until you fall asleep? And she's like, yeah, that sounds nice. And so they lay down and again, they talk about like their life, you know, and like he he asked her like this deep question. I don't even remember what it is. But she's like, huh? Like, you're not good at small talk, are you? And he's like, Nah, I've never mastered it. And um, I think he asked like what she wants in life, right? He asked like yeah. what, she, what she wants in life. And she tells him like she she wants to like blow caution to the wind and like live life in the moment. She doesn't want to like, continue like worrying about about things anymore. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, <laughs> well there's this handsome you know like a rich man who's just like really into you you know um and like she asks him kind of the same question and like he tells her like oh he goes like you know like money's not all it's cracked up to be uh and she's like that sounds like something that all rich guys say and he goes well it's true you know and and he talks about how like he wants to find someone who who loves him for him and and not for his money or his mm -hmm. status and 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 you know and as he's doing his his monologue evie falls asleep basically um, and she wakes up again to find herself alone in her bed and a letter from Walt saying, you look so peaceful. I didn't want to wake you. I'll see you tonight. And then Lucy and Victoria burst into her room. They're like, come on, it's spa day. And like throw a freaking <laughs> a robe at her. And she's like, okay, spa day. Let's go. Yay. And they tell her to leave her phone there that's not going to be needed because there's no service or they're going and they go into this like room that has like a giant pool in the middle of it and then there's like this table with all these women sitting there getting their nails done and whenever they come in like they're like like move we're gonna get ready now and like the all these like ladies like look at her right and they're all wearing like these paper masks like the face masks uh, with the serums and shit and they kind of just like get up and leave and I'm like where the fuck were these ladies at 
throughout the entire time that she's been staying here. <laughs> like, I'm really curious. Like, where were these ladies? Are they like the staff? Like, <laughs> who are these women? Like, it's it's been a thing that's been inside my like a question since we first watched it in theaters. Like, who the fuck are these women? Like, where were they the rest of the movie? Good question. <laughs> right? Where is she? <laughs> where, where did they come from? And so her and Evie, uh, sorry, uh, Evie and Lucy sit down um, and and start to get their nails done. And um, Victoria uh, disrobes. We see everything. No, we don't. Well, we don't see. We don't see. We don't see the coochie, but we see. I a wanted booty. to see everything. I I only saw the. F- <laughs> There's a booty, and uh, don't I? Don't you see? Don't you see her? Her. Good God. Her her. Oh her, God. Her, her I thought her. I thought her titties were were out too. I thought you saw the boobs. Almost, uh, we do see the entire back when she leaves the pool eventually, the and booty. then it went from like I don't like you, Victoria, to like okay, I see why people like you. <laughs> oh, I thought she was hot. I mean, she's a bitch, I mean, but she's hot. <laughs> I mean, like, step me, on me. Just be like, ooh, a dummy mommy? No. Stomp my neck and what? <laughs> You're thirsty? You your Here you go. Stomp fetishes. I just like people who are tall. Oh, I, just, I mean. <laughs> I like women. What? <laughs> I like women. And that's the best answer. Like, I just like this kind of person just women i just like <laughs> doesn't women. matter about all these other extraneous features like just i like women like can't argue with you there well i'm poly so like i like men that <laughs> I, I well i'm poly pan so like i like mm-hmm. men and women so i'm just all like a win's a win and i mean <laughs> a win's I, a win now i do have a boyfriend and i do lean towards more men but every now and then there's a woman that comes to the picture and i'm just like Oh, and Victoria, is that for you? Uh, yeah, stomp. She, she's, she gave me, um, Lady Dimid- um Dimitres Dimidum, Lady Dimidum yes. from the Dimidum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> tall nine foot tall vampire woman, stomp my neck and mommy. Hey. Oh, with the deep V neck and the fancy dress. Yes, Oof. I saw her. I did the same. I saw her, and I was like, <gasps> real life Dimidum. <laughs> I was just like uh, vampire tall lady, yes, <laughs> and she's mean. Thank you. <laughs> you can be mean to me. <laughs> like, just, mm, me and Zio were were thirsting really bad. This is oh, yeah. your way to stand up to a bully. Don't pick on them. Pick on me. I deserve it. And you're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I think that would make them stop. They'd be like, oh. <laughs> No. Oh no! And Lee, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, we saw this movie with uh, a- another person that pops on Indigo. The- Indigo. I don't think he's popped up on this podcast yet, no. but um, he's popped up on Void Annika a lot. James, aka James. He- we went to so- see the movie with him. He is like, "Are y'all gonna be okay? Are y'all good like- over there?" And we're like, "Oh." Mm. He's like, "Do yeah. you need a mop? Do you need a towel?" And I'm like, we "Yes." Need- <laughs> <laughs> we need something. Hey. Like both, both me and Zio were like, like slapping our necks, like, "Come get your get juice." Your juice. <laughs> From like everybody, it was a bisexual dream. That movie. Oh, everybody. Oh, oh. dude, it was a plus for me because I'm poly too. So I'm all like, when I get two <laughs> wives and a husband, yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so Lucy, Lucy was asking uh, Evie some questions about, um, like relationships, like how, like she's like, oh, um, I see you and 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 Lord Deville are starting to get like getting closer, and she's like, oh, well, we're just, we're just like getting to know each other, and Victoria's just like, don't lie, bitch. <laughs> We know. Well, she doesn't say that. She says it in a very more posh and um, uh, sophisticated way. But she nah, she it. might as well have said it like that. <laughs> yeah, but she might as well have said it like, "Bitch, don't lie. We already know. We know." And so, 
Lucy asks her, like, oh, like, would you ever think about getting married? And she's like, oh, hell no, not yet. <laughs> she was like, I'm not ready to settle down. My life is just starting. And, like, Lucy kind of looks, un like, um, uncomfortable at that answer. And, um, I think she says something about, like, like, they started talking about family. And she's just like, oh, I always wanted a sister. And she's like, I always wanted a sister, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like there's there's um there's a bit of back and forth between uh victoria and evie they're they're arguing about how like oh nobody's that pure-hearted and like that and she goes like well let's just agree to disagree you know like she's trying to be not like evie's trying to be nice while victoria is like a bitch Push, yeah she, being a bitch she's pushing evie's buttons and like and it starting to piss her off and during the argument one of the nail techs the nail tech that was working on evie's hands uh, fing, uh nails like clips her finger and like cuts her and she's like oh my god i'm so sorry and she's like no it's okay and she's like she gets up and she's looking at it and victoria comes up and she goes oh I'll let me look at it and sticks her finger in her mouth Sticks Evie's finger in her mouth, and Evie's like, what that, the fuck? That should have been the giveaway. I, I don't know how I didn't see it then. Really? Yeah, I was still... I honestly didn't even see the turn happen until it happened. Like, I'm like, oh, yep, okay, yeah, mm hmm Yep, I should have seen that. Went back <laughs> through the entire movie in my head, and I'm like, oh, yep, 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 yep. That makes the sense. signs were there. Yeah. Oh, I mean, there was, I mean, there was, there was, there was also a scene like during like the little party that they had, where like they send two two maids down into the <laughs> cellar to get like more champagne, and she goes, "Well, you need two of us," and the fucking butler, the dick, is just like, "Well, you have a knack for dropping things," and I'm just like, Ugh. Then he shuts the door behind them. Just and like... locks it. And then he does like his like weird prayer and walks away. And then another spooky, ooky, spooky monster shows up. Jesus Christ. My dog keeps on scaring the hell out of me. I keep on hearing noises behind me. And I'm like, what is that? <gasps> Walt is after me. <laughs> um... And, oh, during the conversation, I think uh, Victoria tells her, like, oh, do you really even know, like, who Walt is? Like, like, do you know the truth about him and, and like, what's, like, like, what his past is? And she goes, like, well, I believe, like, whatever's in the past is in the past. It's all about now. And she's like, ha! Huh! Like, whatever. Like, she's just all like, nobody's that pure-hearted. That's the whole conversation. So, I think... While she's walking away, she's still like in her robe and shit. She goes to like the secret compartment, opens up the door, like opens up, opens it up, gets the key and goes into the library. Yeah. To where she goes and there's a desk there and on the desk are files of, of all of the maids and then a file on her. And she gets um, understandably upset. And she goes and starts packing her bags. And um, Walt just happens to see her <laughs> pack her bags. And he's like, oh, my God, what are you doing? And sh she's like, well, you have a fucking file on me. Like, you, like, she goes, that's, like, that's not fucking okay. And... And he goes like, "Oh, like it's is it a bad thing to want to know who's going to be staying um at like at your house?" And she goes, "Uh <laughs> Dude, you have like my my like the schools that I went to and all this other stuff like what's the point? Like you have my whole life just written out on a file with my name on it." And and he he finally like um like she's like i'm gonna leave this is like like that's not okay and he finally like talks her down and says like look listen like i've had people come into come into this house um 
like it was a last minute thing and so like i i'm not good with computers i don't like technology that's why i asked oliver to just send a little bit of information on you because like people have come here and taken advantage of my hospitality it's not like he, he goes like it's nothing more than that and they reconcile and have um uh, adult relations because we can't say that because we'll get um, uh, uh, demonetized because it's going to be posted up on YouTube. So, you know, they have um, um, adult fun time, you know. They hide the salami. <laughs> they have saxophone lessons on the bed. Uh, in the horizontal tango, you know. Um, uh, uh, mommy, daddy wrestling. <laughs> The birds and the bees. <laughs> the very classic one. Birds and the bees. And so um after after their their um their 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 super happy fun time, um they it's this, this whole movie is just a lot of talking for, for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, just a just a lot of talking. They they talk again, they talk some more. And and uh yeah. How did, how did they get around to it? It's like, oh, well, they're just lying in bed um, having pillow talk. And uh, yeah. he's like, oh, well, would you would you want to marry me? And she's just all like, yeah. And he goes, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and then, like, he's just like, cool, I'll see you tonight. And then she's like, you know I'm joking, right? Like, I don't want to fucking get married right now. And he's just like, ha he, <laughs> okay. he smiles, okay. <laughs> and then he leaves, and I'm just all like... Um, that was yeah. kind of awkward. <laughs> like, I kind of sat there. Like, I was like, "Am I the only one feeling kind of awkward about that the whole interaction?" Like, like I guess it's my social anxiety because, like, as soon as he left, I'm like, Ooh, "Did I say the wrong thing? I probably Ooh. shouldn't have said that." Like, Ooh. right? I probably should have never agreed to marry him, even though I've only known him for like two days and we just had sex. You know, so right. as a saxophone lessons. <laughs> We just had sex. I was picturing him just being like, hey, you want to get married? And she's like, sure. I mean, it's a joke, right? But then, like, he's running out. It's like, no, Ken, here you are. You already said yes. There's no take back. <laughs> <laughs> no take backsies. <laughs> you said yes. Ha <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're just like, uh, what? Uh-huh. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um he tells her well like well before he leaves he does tell her that there is a dress for tonight that he has gotten her mm-hmm. um it's a special dress that she's going to be wearing and like cut to to that scene in the dining room and everybody's sitting there everybody has like these like masks on the masquerade mm-hmm. paper faces on parade um don't 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 call that i don't want to get copyright infringement it was two two words um (laughs) it's a good musical okay anyway um and like it's kind of awkward they're all just kind of sitting there quietly and i'm all like the special guest is late again and she shows up and like she sits like like she joins and um it's a rehearsal dinner it's supposed to be for whenever like she expects to finally meet the bride and groom yeah and that's whenever he he talks about like they they promise like no more lies no more like charades like we tell nothing but the truth so he's like haha okay and he goes and he talks about the three families and how they've all been like in alliance with each other how like all three families together make uh like like powerful and you know he's been nothing but gracious to these families and like the power that they have was like threatened whenever um emmeline uh uh unalived uh, herself and that's whenever like there's like this quick flash of like the painting of the on the wall that's in her room to like the conversation that her and oliver are having about like the whole like uh what is it scandal and and then mm-hmm. the flash and then it flashes to like her unaliving herself <laughs> so like all of that and then she's like what the hell's going on and he and he goes ah oh, but now like we don't have to worry about that because oliver has found evie 
Um, and he goes like, and our power will continue to, to, and, and my protection will continue to go forth, um, whenever me and Evie are married. And she's like, what? <laughs> and like, everybody's like, yay. And then that's whenever the butler, Mr. Field, that's his name, Mr. Field, the butler, um, slits. He's like, um, oh, refreshments. He goes like, hmm, here you go. Like, like they put a bowl. <laughs> Victoria's in. like, finally. You know, like, I was getting you. so bored. Slits, <laughs> slits the maid's throat and pours the blood into the bowl. Um, And he pours three flutes of of the blood and hands one to Walter, one to Lucy, and one to um, Victoria. And it is revealed that they are vampires whenever they drink the blood. And you even see their prominent fangs. Yes, you see their fangs. They're like like their nails grow out, get darker, you know, all that good shit. And Evie's ancestors, the Alexanders, were one of the three families for centuries who have offered one of their women to become Walter's wife in exchange for protection and wealth. Um... Uh, Emmeline was supposed to be Walter's third bride, but she unalived herself um, because of the guilt of killing humans, which was not really voiced, but it's it's implied because they're like, oh, well, she was unfeeling well, you know, and so and and uh, there's a huge leap in this uh, uh plot summary that i'm reading yeah. i'm like that's a that's a bit of a leap because it doesn't really say any of that so i'm just gonna <laughs> i'm gonna read what it says right so but she unalived herself due to her guilt of killing humans and due to the loss of her love evie's great grandfather and infant son that was never ever said or implied all that woman said was what? it ends with me yeah that's what it says i'm reading it it says it ends with me and then she unalives herself, right? So um I'm not sure. And so like she they uh, the Alexander family had ha- have had been having trouble in finding a member until they found Evie. Um and so like she tries to leave and like everybody's like kind of looking at her and like uh, Walter's just like, hey, guy, you're embarrassing me. Like, we promised ourselves that we wouldn't, like, you know, that the charade is over. And she's just all like, like, why are you doing this? And, like, she looks at all of them and they're like, why aren't you helping me? And they're just all just like, um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, we're all in on this, right? Yeah. So there I was, barbecue over, sauce like, on, my on my titties. <laughs> and, like, he's like, you know what? Everybody eats. Um, uh, and then he like tells the, um, Lucy and Victoria like tonight you have her tomorrow she's mine and so that's cut- not weird and I'm all like ooh um, <laughs> I'm a little concerned and so then it shows her it shows her being um, like on like a like, tied up to a chair with like a freaking like sack over her head and she's carried by these servants and she gets like thrown into like this dungeon where like Lucy and Victoria are and like they're talking and like they explain everything to her. Like like Lucy's just all like, Oh, like with um all three of our bloodlines, like we we never age, you know, and we're very powerful. Um, whenever you first turn into a vampire, like you have you have the the like the strength of a hundred men and but like um it's the 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 ceremony isn't complete until until walter drinks your blood and and then like they both are like she goes like it took me a long time to get used to it too but like we can be together we can be the sisters that we've always wanted for each other and like victoria is just like still being condescending and stuff like that and um one of the maids that evie became friends with like tries to like jet like she actually runs forward for some reason and she's chained up and uh victoria was gonna eat her and evie's like no and she goes oh you like this one she's like yes and so she calls a servant in and she's like take this one the bride has taken a liking to her we'll save her for later you know 
We'll save her for the ceremony. Yeah. And then locks Evie into a coffin to where no. Evie's freaking the fuck out. Like she nails her in this. She's like, Welcome to your new home. And Luke's just like, Oh no, don't worry. Like, there's so many misconceptions. We can actually walk around during the daytime. Like, it's not a big deal. And she's just like, Fucking get me out of here. <laughs> like, that's not even her biggest worry. She's getting nailed into a fucking coffin. Yeah, it's a no for me. <laughs> I was just like, mm, you know, that was like the part that kind of like was just like, mm, maybe that's not for me because I'm claustrophobic. Yeah, you know, yeah. But... Same. And then during this entire movie, during this up until now, um, her her lady's maid, Mrs. Swift, has been very un- like she just looks sad and troubled and uncomfortable about the whole thing um like she knows something like it's hinted throughout the whole like she's just like mm, i'm not okay about what's going on and then lo and behold mrs swift saves evie well doesn't she's not saved but you know she frees evie from the coffin yep. and there's like a, a, a scuffle and um, um, Mr. Field, the, the asshole butler, kills Mrs. Swift. And I was just like, fuck Ooh. this guy. Um, and I think Evie runs to the icebox. The, not the icebox, the... Uh, the ice house? Yeah, she hides the there house. briefly. She does hide there briefly. I think she like goes to her room at one point, too, during the run. Like her running away and like Mr. Fields like hunting after her, but like she does hide in the in the ice house. And I think she locks him in the ice house. I believe. Yeah, she does sneak out and like boards the door up with um well, I guess the board that it came with to lock it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she runs off the grounds and into town. And she finds, I think, like, one, like, one shop that's still, like, kind of open. Like, the shopkeepers are still there. Mm -hmm. And she, like, asks for the help. And, like, they give her tea. And, like, they're like, oh, my God. Like, are you okay? And she's like, I got them trying to fucking kill me. And they're like, well, tell us all about it. And, like, we'll make sure that you're safe. And, like, so she's telling them everything. And they're like, oh, my God. Let's call for help. And so I think mm. the husband's the one who's calling for help as the wife is giving her the tea. And like it shows like pictures of, of like it like there's like little scenes where it's like showing pictures of, of them with like other people and stuff like that. And then it's revealed that the this man and this woman work for Walter and they're like mm-hmm. um the tea that has that is uh, like she, I think she fights them. Like she, like tries to like knock their asses out. But I think the tea is an uh, is um like a it, sedative or something a to make sedative. You to sleep. Yeah. yeah, that puts her to sleep. And like as Jonathan, like and Jonathan, it's Jonathan and Mina Harker. Um, Jonathan like tells Walt where like where she is. Yeah, and like Evie smacks Jonathan with. I don't know if it's with the teacup or with something else, but uh, she fucks him up. Yeah. Then, but then Mina retaliates and then she's like, don't fuck this up for us. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember oh. he's like, don't fuck this up for us. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And don't fuck this up for us, bitch. I ain't dying. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the point where she wakes up back in the castle or manor yes yeah, so she does uh she wakes up to find herself with um the the maid imogen um that's the one that that she became friends with and oh my god her name is imogen <laughs> sorry i'm a, a i watch critical role laura bailey uh anyway uh, <laughs> i love imogen um and walter and and uh, Walt reveals himself to be uh, Dracula, Dracula, 
as he mentions that he was once known as the son of the dragon. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, like, if, ladies has, and gentlemen, if you don't know what that, if you don't know what Dracula means, it's literally son of, meaning the, dragon. of the name. Yeah. The name meaning of the name, the more, you know, the more you learn. Great. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, oh, I was known as the son of the dragon. And I'm just all like Dracula. <laughs> That's hot. Come get your juice, daddy. Uh, d- daddy. <laughs> um, like he goes on this whole spiel, right? And oh, by the way, they're in the chapel now. Like, like this is the, the mariage between Walt and Evie. And Evie watches Walt bite into Imogen's leg and she falls unconscious. Num num num. Um, um well, Evie, I think, falls unconscious, right? I think so, yeah. And then, like, she wakes up, and now she's in a wedding dress. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This was before they were in the, the mariage. <laughs> so she wakes up, she's in a wedding dress, and is walking down the aisle to marry Walter. Um, They go through the whole ceremony, right? Like, she, like she's not fighting it anymore. She's, like, it seems like as if she's, like, unwillingly accepted her fate. Um from what it seems like and as they finish exchanging the vows she bites walt's arm and like fucking like chugs his blood and i mean like she is chugging and he's just like okay like it's time to stop and she's just like like i think not she's like i'm gonna drain your ass suck the soul out this man and it, but it's his arm it's his arm like like yeah. like i'm gonna make this perfectly clear it is his forearm like it's is literally what's attached to the upper no. part of his body she left it vague <laughs> nope i'm not doing that i do not want to get freaking demonetized whenever it comes down to it it is literally the 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 extremity that's attached to his shoulder like that that <laughs> by his head you know you know yeah, yeah. that one yes <laughs> that she, go, she is going to town drinking that blood because she has an idea <laughs> and she does she has an idea and she instantly transforms into a vampire a very strong one at that <laughs> and i'm all like oh shit's about to go down She's about to beat some ass. And that's exactly what the fuck she does. She sets the fucking wedding chapel on fire. She And she stabs Walt in the heart. Uh, so uh, flashback to whenever she breaks the lamp. Um, the lamp has like this like uh, it's there's there's like this pedestal that it is. And then there's like a weird like spiky thing that's on it. That kind of looks like a stake. It just, you know putting it out there so a flash forward to now back to the wedding chapel she has that stake i believe and she fucking stabs his ass that's on period and whenever she stabs him it like rapidly like ages him like it makes him look fucking old and then like flees with daya which is another maid which is the second maid that that she became friends with um uh, it's like uh, Victoria gets fucking pissed. She's so angry and she tries to attack Evie, um, which um, Daya helps Evie. And um, I think Evie like tells Daya to run. Like she's like, get the fuck out of here. Leave, run away, far away. And after she runs away, Victoria and Evie um, fight again. Like they are continuing to fight and fight and fight, fight. And then, like, Lucy intervenes. And I don't remember exactly what side she's on with this fight. But she... I think she Lucy ends up... Fight. What? Doesn't she take on Victoria? Yeah. I think she stops Victoria. Yeah. Because she's kind of done being a vampire. Yeah, she's. I think she's tired of it, too. And, like, as her and Victoria fight, like... They're in the foyer where this weird giant um, statue is of a giant fucking dragon stomping on a knight. Now, this this statue also has a spear sticking out of it. And Victoria, I'm sorry, Lucy 
um, impels Victoria on the spear and then herself to make sure that Victoria doesn't leave that spear and it turns them both into ashes. Yeah. Um, and like literally right after that fucking Mick douchebag fucking attacks Evie. That's just his name now. Like I, that's, <laughs> I will not refer to him as field. He is Butler douchebag. Like, like, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> and like he attacks her with a fucking spear. And like he states that he wishes that he had killed um her great grandfather and grandfather. Like he's like talking mad shit to her. And um she kills him by breaking off the spearhead and stabbing him in the chest. Yeah. Um and then she starts to get chased by Walter. And this fucking, like, I was like, oh my god! Because, like, he, this man is, like, crawling on walls. Like, he's jumping from, like, wall to wall and the ceiling and stuff, chasing after her ass. Yeah. And, like, grabs her by the throat. Um. And... I think some words are exchanged. I don't remember. And she's able to break free um, by cutting his wrist with, I'm assuming, uh, I think it was piano piano wire again. Like she breaks off some piano wire and cuts off his wrist. Like cuts off his, like his hand. I think so. Yes. And then kicks him into the fire. Yeah. Um, and as he's burning alive, she loses her power, you know, because he dies and she turns back into a human and she escapes the manor, um, as it's, as it's set aflame. Um, two weeks later, um, Evie and Grace have shown up in London and they track down Oliver. And, um, he had been prepared to flee. He, he was, he was going to leave the country after paying off the police. Um, and it, it, like, it's very much, it's not even implied, like, they were planning on killing him for tricking Evie. And being uh, com- complicit in the murders committed by the the coven of vampires that were there, but I don't think it really shows them killing him. I think it zooms out of the building that they're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like her friend just shows up with a bat. He was like, you know, a bat, and he's a vampire. So mm-hmm. just seemed funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Th- I thought that was fucking great. I was like, see, I like, I like. I like Grace. I I wish there was more of her. Honestly, you should have given more parts to Grace, to her character, because God, she was the fucking funniest. I want her as a best friend. Yeah. Adding to my group of best friends. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, that is the movie of The Invitation. Dun, dun, dun. I actually like this take on Dracula, to be honest. Same. Uh, I like I, I like this Dracula. It's nice. I do too. I like it. A, I like it a lot. Like it a lot. A lot. A lot. It tickles my fancy. It really does. Like it's. I was reading some of the some of the um, reviews on it on Google, and like there's like this one that was like two and a half stars, and he goes like, I you know it was my day off, and I I went out of my comfort zone and like was gonna watch something that I usually never watch, and he's like, I fucking hated it, and I was just like, why? <laughs> What's what do people hate about this movie? I don't understand. Maybe it's just because of all the talking. Like it took too long to get to where. Yeah. Like the good shit yeah. started happening. Fair. 
that's my only complaint is that it's a little slow in some parts. I mean, it's a romance. That too. It's a horror. I don't know. It's a horror romance or a romance horror. I mean, this movie gave me this. I would put this movie in the same camp as like, in the same grouping of like Helsing, Underworld. Really? Um, Helsing. Yes, I feel like Helsing was darker. Not Helsing. Van Helsing. Sorry. Yeah, I feel. Yeah. Oh no, I know that. I know which Helsing you're talking about. I know that we're not talking about the Alucard. No, fucking. Oh, ben fucking Helsing. Nazis! I fucking called it. Like, no, I know. I know which Helsing you're talking about. The one. No, I, but I was. I would put in the same camp as like Van Helsing, Underworld. Um, I still feel like those movies are were darker than what this one was. The last witch hunter, Hansel and Gretel. Yes, um, witch I hunters. will agree with I. I will agree with like the witch hunter, like but it's, all those, like, but that like genre of fantasy horror, ac- action fantasy horror, the gothic, with some of the, the yeah, horror. yeah. This is like a. I would say this is like a modern take on that genre in like the er, late nineties, early two thousands, like heavily that. Mm, yes. um, granted, the last witch hunter and the Hansel and Gretel were early were twenty tens, but still same genre. I would classify that as this much this as part of that, but just for the twenties for the uh, 2020s. Um, I knew I was getting into going this movie. Cause I was like, okay, I see what they're dishing and I'm here for it. <laughs> so, cause like, I grew up on this type on this type of like genre film. Same. So like, I, bitch, like, I, watched interview, I watched the interview with the vampire, like, <laughs> Which was like that, like I was watching, I I, uh, I was watching um Gab uh, Gab uh, Gab um what's her last name, um Jacksepticeye's girlfriend, mm-hmm. Gab Smolders, and she was and she was talking about how uh this was I was watching one of the older videos because I um I noticed that she had a playlist for I'm on observation duty, and so I was watching them because I really I love those kind of games. So I was like, ooh. I'm going to watch it with her and play along. <laughs> and when she was talking about how her and Jack had like just watched interview with the vampire. And she made a comment of how like this movie felt longer than it did to like read the book. And I read the book and I was like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> like that movie dragged on that story. <laughs> and so right. like, I can agree with like, so if if I could sit through interview with a vampire at the age of like 13, whenever my ADHD was at the all time high and I could not manage it that well, un unmedicated, then I could sit through the invitation and enjoy every fucking minute of it. And I, what did. about, what about uh, our other two hosts? Did y'all enjoy this movie? If not, why, you know, kind of overview stuff before we get into the rating. Hang on just a moment. Can a rating be maids? <laughs> you mate? yeah. Yes. Oh no. Zio. What? I'm a housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> well, we knew thee well. Ah! I'll be like, I'll be one of your wives. <laughs> Come get your juice. I've been playing into it this whole time. I knew what I was getting into. <laughs> You're just a half breed. They will never accept you. Ah, oh, no! Ooh. Sad. Anyway, Mad Chairman, uh, while, while we wait for um, Bunyip to gather his thoughts, uh, what'd you th- how'd you feel about this movie? Mm, it, was, it was okay. I am definitely one of the people that thought that it took a little too long to get to the turn where it actually became interesting had they moved the whole um uh turn of you know that they're vampires and they're doing crazy ass shit like at the first kind of family get together that would have i thought it would have helped with the pacing um i see what they were doing now that going back and knowing what they were doing the signs were there and obviously if you aren't really looking for them you totally pass them up but uh that was that was pretty fun I, it, it'll make it it makes for a good second watch i think uh but past that i don't think it's uh, it's all right 
um, the some of the music was kind of funny, and it like the kind of like tune that they used. It was a little um, old school, kind of like vampire, like vampire, like like jingle that they had that was pretty funny whenever they played it every time. Um, yeah. I do kind of wish that they kept her. She was a vampire longer than mm-hmm. she was. Mm-hmm. Bunya. All right. Uh, so there's a few things that I do like about this movie, such as that manicure scene being intense because they kept building it up just like oh you know someone's gonna snip a fingernail or two yeah. and draw some blood and like it's just clearly building up and then at the moment um evie is turning around just like victoria what's your problem and then it happens and you're like oh <gasps> it's okay i got it oh what the fuck oh <laughs> which that goes along with a bunch of foreshadowing that i now realizing there's a lot of foreshadowing. There's yeah. so much it's like, foreshadowing. Hey, did you know this is about Dracula? <laughs> they have a dragon statue that's in almost every every time that scene is shown, the dragon statue is always in frame. Yeah. <laughs> and the Shrike uh, has a habit of impaling things. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like Vlad, Vlad the Impaler? Like yeah. Vlad the Impaler? Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I get it. And, and they're in England? What? And on top of that, uh, there, I did kind of notice how they had masks for this for that dinner scene. Like, why do they need masks? And it's like, oh, it's to literally symbolize that they are removing the facade. Like, hey, we're not actually on your side. We're vampires. You're going to get married to uh, Walter here. Symbolism. And you're going to like it. Like, pretty much like we're not going to hide anything anymore. Here's, here's what's happening. Were they all vampires, or was it just? No, oh, it, it was, was only just, some of them. It was, it was just, just it was just Walt, wives. Victoria, and Lucy. Yeah, okay. everybody else is um a servant. Everybody or, else more. is part of the fa- is part of the three families the the Alexanders gotcha. the um and the, the the two other ones the two other ones you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah all I but know there's... is the Alexanders. There's also the names from the book, like Lucy is actually one of the first characters in the original book to mm-hmm. become a vampire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Despite the efforts of like four different men giving her blood. And I was like, yeah. nope, can't save him. I like, can't save her. She, and they have to kill her. And then Mina gets into the same condition. It's like, okay, we have to kill Dracula himself to save Mina. Well, Jonathan mm-hmm. is also a character in, in it. Yeah. As well, he's... Mm-hmm. Um, Jonathan um Jonathan Harker, Harker is one of the main protagonists in the novel yeah. of Dracula. He he, tra- he goes to Transylvania and has the encounter with with him and his bride. Encounter slash um feisty love weirdly gay 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 there's a lot of homo fucking Hence with Jonathan and Dracula anyway. That's a that's that's an episode for the book watchers. <laughs> yeah, and the first hour of the movie kind of plays out like the beginning of that book where yeah, Jonathan a little is bit. in the castle and even in the book, like everyone in town's like, Oh, you shouldn't go up there. Dracula's weird. But in this in the movie it's just Grace, like, I don't know if you should go on this field trip to um this wedding to your family like you're just knowing them and she goes like, like you want to know why you want to know why you do why he's doing it colonial guilt and i was like oh <laughs> <laughs> colonial <laughs> guilt <laughs> pretty much he's like yeah. uh, the white man feels guilty and i'm just like oh <laughs> but also the strange things she notices around the manor and mm-hmm. the wives encountering her at least victoria's terrible but then lucy is less terrible yeah, Lucy's Actually, a sweetheart. At all. I'm sorry, yeah, she's, Lucy's she's a sweetheart. Great. And in the book, like all the brides are tormenting Jonathan until Dracula shows. Like, oh no, 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 you are not touching my man. I mean, guest. Hi. Y- yes. <laughs> There's so much like jealousy between the brides and Jonathan. Oh, well, I mean that does happen in the movie too. Like whenever yeah. douchebag is like being condescending to her, 
and he's just like oh she's one of the 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 more important the, guests the important guests and he goes oh my apologies yeah she's the jonathan of the story mm-hmm. it Pretty seems much. jonathan slash um oh god I know, I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> but yeah, she's kind of a she's Eve is kind of like a mix match of Jonathan and Helsing, no? Um, no, not Helsing. Um, yeah, she's kind of a mix match of a couple different characters, like at least uh, two characters in the book. So she, so you could see where they take the inspiration from from uh, from the Dracula story. Um, but yes. I'm trying to figure out what the names are. That's gonna and bug me now. I think there was a character, maybe they were named Quincy Swift, which is where uh, Swift might come in. And Quincy is the only character of those four dudes in the book that dies when they're fighting Dracula. Swift, God. wasn't that the the butler? No. Invitation three families. Hold on. It says the ending explained. I don't need the inv- the ending explained. I just need to know what the names are. Well, I'm starting to think like if people had negative reviews about this movie, it might be because they compared it a lot to the book. It's like it doesn't play out quite the same way. I'm like, I know no. it's an interpretation, and they can be fun or they can be terrible. It's like loose when they and inspired. Jonathan and Mina Harker in the in the town. I was like, oh, Evie's gonna be saved. And it's like, nope. They're with Walter. I'm like, damn it. They were like, fuck. Fine. Go with. Now, there is also another ending to the movie. A secret ending. An alternate ending. Uh, So, the ending to the film is that, obviously, everyone died, or they all die except for Eve. Well, so, here's the description of it. So, while the theatrical ending of the movie ends with Dracula being vanquished, this alternate ending changes the game completely. It reveals that Dracula is very much alive and serves as a short adaptation of the lost, last voyage of the Demeter storyline from uh, Stroker's classic horror novel. So the alternate ending, he ends up being alive, but he's, he's on the boat. <gasps> Give us a sequel. Uh... Right. Um, that alternate ending is on the Blu-ray and uh, digital which I have the digital version of it. I don't own it. But it's, I really do hope to make a sequel to this. Cause I would love one, but oh, I doubt oh, yeah, they I will. would watch it. I'd watch it. Yeah. He's aboard the Russian sailing vessel. So he's very much alive in his alternate ending. Cool. But and honestly, the ending is better than the one we got. Just saying they should have put that one in the movie. Hmm. Not going to lie, that that ending that you just described to me kind of reminds me about the ending that happened in Dexter. And I was like, oh, I fucking hated that. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hated the ending to Dexter. I was like, what is this trash? <laughs> yeah. So rating system, one out of five maids. Yes. That we're going with maids. Okay, so who wants to go first on their rating? It's not necessarily one out of five maids or three out of five. It's like, how many of them survived? (laughs) (laughs) How many maids survived? One. One survived. Oh, damn. I mean, that's in the movie anyway. Yeah. But in the rating, if we have a half rating, how's that going to work? Well... (laughs) Half of the maid survives. Half the maid's still around. (laughs) Maybe not alive. (laughs) Like her body's there, you know. Her body's there. (laughs) Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, maybe it's that she's alive, but she's like so traumatized that she will never actually have a life. So is it really a life to begin with? She's dead inside. Yes. Catatonic. Oops, sorry. I can live with that. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll go first then. Uh, kind of just repeating what I said before that I like the little music that that they did. It was pretty funny. Um, I do wish that they had stretched out the uh, actual core parts of it more. Uh, the build up was just a little too much build up for me. 
but that's just my personal taste. Um, you don't like to be edged? No comment. Uh, <laughs> please don't comment. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm um, it just sorry. was not enjoyable. It just wasn't. <laughs> not this one. Um, it it just, was the just anticipation kind of... ruined it for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Wow. The panic. I'm sorry, Matt <laughs> Chairman. It was a joke. <laughs> so, um, with that, I would say th- I would give this one a three and a half maids out of five. It was not bad, it, but it wasn't, like, amazing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. The parts I, that were good, I, I actually liked. So I can agree. Excuse me. Um, I, I agree with you, Matt Chairman. Um, I will say, um, a props to, uh, the production because you guys actually used blue filtered lights to show that it's dark and we could still see what was happening. Mm -hmm. So, uh, props to y'all because like, like that's one of my biggest pet peeves y'all like. Oh, it's supposed to be nighttime. Then fucking put a blue filter over it. Like, I'm pretty sure that people are smart enough to understand that it's nighttime. So I give you an extra point just for that. (laughs) Period. Um, I do love the soundtrack. The soundtrack was fantastic. I love um, me. I I watch the K dramas for fun. So um, the the build up. I'm used to that because it takes like 12 episodes just for them to hold hands, you know? So. In case that was... shit. Oh my god. Oh, it's better. <laughs> it's better than the first episode of a fucking Western show where they're already like, like, like having relations, you know? <sighs> so, like, <laughs> just like, oh, they're finally holding hands. Yay! <laughs> anyway. So, uh, build up was okay for me. I loved the the witty banter between between Evie and Walt. Um, I think that all the characters were were really well written, and like everybody did a good job on the movie, in my opinion. Um, I do wish that there was a little bit more horror. Like, I loved that there was a lot of foreshadowing, but like, if you got to see Walt like in the library mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the first time and then him turning to the vampire i'm gonna like oh, yes like, <laughs> i'm in <laughs> sold <laughs> right then and there so like i i wish there was a little bit more vampires to be honest they're one of my favorite uh fantasy monsters and i i honestly wish that there was more um so yeah i'll i'll give it a three a three and a half as well just for that Actually, you know uh, what? I'll round up to a four. Four for you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, for me, I will give this some a three and a half out of five maids as well. I love this movie. I do wish I saw more vampire, more horror, but the ride was fun. And I will watch this movie again. It's a high three. It's a good 3.5 out of five. Like it's almost a three point six. Like it's almost like a four. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like we only deal in num like in whole in numbers halves. and half halves. number integers. We don't go to point six unless it's from an average. Yeah. If there yeah, was some more true. if there was some more horror and more action with like her being a vampire longer, it would have been a solid four. Yeah. So uh, am I next? Yes. Yeah. You okay. are last but not least, Bunny. Okay, okay, okay. 3.5 for pretty much the same reasons. It's a long build up, lots of exposition, and I did want to see, you know, less hinting of like, hey, it's Dracula. It's vampires. Like, I get it. <laughs> you could have kept a little bit more in the dark. I do like the <laughs> twist, and it's like, oh, you're the bride. I'm like, uh, oh. I'm getting married? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but there's one pet peeve that I have, which is 
their vampire rules. And I'm fine with them taking a few liberties. Like, oh, we can walk around during the day. It's fine. Like, mm-hmm. Okay, it would be a little too limiting if it was just night. Also, that would give things away very easily. It was like, mm-hmm. why can't y'all walk around during the day? Wait a minute. Are y'all undead? <laughs> Something like that. Are you vampires? What? How... Victoria and Lucy get stabbed, like they get impaled. It's like, it's not even in the chest. It's more close to the abdomen and they die. And like, hey, don't they have to be stuck in the chest or does that not matter? And isn't it supposed to be like a wooden stake instead of yeah. like a stone or whatever? Yeah. Stone stone. And, well. And Walter catches on fire. So it's like, geez, it seems like anything can kill these guys. So, um, I mean, if, if we're looking at it from like... Um, Cause I like I do I do like purifying rituals and stuff like that you know for my house for protection and stuff and and if it's something that's made of like 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 if it's considered like a, a pure substance like like how how rock salt is is a pure substance because it comes from the earth um, and you put it on your window seals so that like evil spirits can't come in you know that kind of mm-hmm. thing. So, or, or like, if you want to go like supernatural route, like you put it in a fucking circle and like you're safe inside that circle. Um, uh, like if that stone was made out of purity and vampires were considered evil spirits, evil beings, then I would understand it that way if we're going that route. But I mean, like, there's just some things with vampires that keep the rules, man. I don't want to see no glittery vampires anymore. I'm tired. <laughs> well, yeah, because the vampire lore is very much all over the place in modern day. Because the original rules, people don't even, I don't, a lot of creators don't even know the original rules anymore because it's been so convoluted and changed. Because some of the original rules are insane. Like Dracula can turn into a wolf, can change into a wolf. He's a shapeshifter. Yeah. But that, and that's kind of where the whole werewolf thing comes from. Because originally, mm-hmm. werewolves were, were they were um, back in the day, like eons ago. Werewolves and vampires were almost looked at as the same creature oh, before that's... they were split because of Dracula yeah. and vampires of legend turning into wolves. Mm-hmm. So they're almost kind of looked at as very similar, if not the same thing, for a while before they were split. So fun fact for y'all, because if you read the original book, Dracula turns into a, a wolf a lot of the time, or like, especially in the very beginning, he'll like it was he would follow um, Jonathan as a very large like dire wolf, mm, that and that's a reason. Really yeah, and that's a reason why Strahd also does that too, because <laughs> they had to get it. They had to get they got that information from somewhere. Yeah, uh, for anybody who plays Dungeons and Dragons, there's a module called Curse of Strahd, and you're stuck on a plane with an evil vampire lord, and his name is Strahd, and he can yeah. turn into a wolf. Yeah. Now, it's not a dire wolf, that's just how I play it. Like, he has to be a very large wolf. wolf. Yeah, it's just a, it's just like three wolves put together. And I say a wolf. dire wolf, but you just tra- he transforms to a very large wolf, and but. Like once upon a time, a <laughs> yeah. But once upon a time, they thought that werewolves and vampires were in the, were the same. So, and that's why when they split, they have a whole history between the two and shit. So, fun facts for all. <laughs> so to summarize, the vampire seemed a little easy to kill in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair. That's pretty much fair. what I was getting at. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like if they spent more time and yeah it happens in the last 30 minutes of the movie so i guess you have to wrap it up but if they spent less time with that build up in the beginning to hey they're vampires yeah and they're dangerous and then more time like planning out how to kill them then that would have been a little preferable at least what i think or if the or if the pole the uh stakes or poles or whatever me out of silver that kind of makes sense or if they were blessed with like holy water or some shit 
that would make sense. But like Find there was a family revolver with silver bullets. Oh, how exactly. Convenient. Like the silver bullets, granted, silver is more for the werewolf. But then again, but again, that would Ooh. that would make more sense than just oh stab and that's it. No explanation. Well, silver was also a thing that they did back in the day before the werewolves became a thing. Like yes. before they separated werewolves and vampires. Yes, that's why I said silver would even make sense. It would confuse people nowadays because. Silver is more associated with the werewolf, but that would make more sense than just stabbing them with a metal rod. And, oh, they're dead. Cause it kind of just, it doesn't really make sense. So if they said, Oh, it's silver. It's pure silver. That would, that would make more sense than the way they did it. Lost the tension and excitement with this, with the movie towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's my rating of 3.5 maids that survived so, out of five. So the average of that is... It's a 3.6. 3.6? <laughs> See, we get that number out of averages. <laughs> yep. So it's like, together... like a 3.6? And you're like, so... no. <laughs> so... I thought you meant that you wanted to give it a rating of 3.6 just for no. you personally. No. <laughs> no personal lease. <laughs> but as a average, so the average of Spookalypse ratings is a 3.6 out of 5 mm-hmm. mates. So, Which it seems to be agreeing with everybody else, like when it comes to like Rotten Tomatoes, Google. And, it's a mid tier. It's like it's yeah. a well for me, it's a little more mid tier. But overall, it's like most people's consensus is it's mid tier. It's decent. They people just want more. Yeah, we more want out more. of it. Give us more. We want more vampires, more uh, horror, more just quicker pacing. Oh my god, does Evie become like a vampire hunter? We need to know. Give us more. Oh my god, that'd be everything. Oh my god, I would live if she does. Wait, doesn't she become that at the end though? George, she be she doesn't become a vampire hunter. She becomes like hunter of the families and she's like, oh, I'm that's gonna, right. like that's take right. my revenge. And I'm just like, yeah. That's right. She that's has right. her vampire powers go away after Yeah, she, yeah unfortunately. Like, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that makes me sad because I'm all Cause, like when you well, kill the master, you lose your powers. And I was like, oh. And I was just okay. like, mm. her friend has a bat. <laughs> They'll be fine. The fucking puns, man. I love it. So if you like these type of so if you like these type of horror movies, please go watch it. It's on Netflix at the time of this recording. And yes. probably for at least 2023 at least. So or you know, for like a quarter of the year because they usually at least update quarterly a good chunk a good chunk of 2023 if not the year but go watch on netflix it's on there it's fun sadly the alternate ending is not on there again you'll have to get the blu-ray or the digital download for that but or you can look it up on youtube it's also on there is um it? yes it is you can look up the scene they posted the alternate ending on there what? but Nonetheless, thank you guys for listening to today's episode. Catch us next time as we talk about something else. Until then, bye. Bye bye. Come get your juice. We're gonna host you off. Bleh, bleh. <laughs> I do not say bleh bleh bleh. Imagine fire hose. <laughs> Dirty, disgusting. Come get your juice. Let me be part of that polycule. I'm ready. Blah, blah, blah. Suck that blah. <laughs> <laughs>